we began to diverge in the 1900s, especially in the 1960s. And the net result is that in the United States today, we have a medium-sized welfare state, and in Western Europe, they have a large-sized welfare state. And of course, that large-sized welfare state is accompanied by much higher tax burdens. Now let's look at whether that has been a good choice for Europe. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is an international bureaucracy based in Paris, that by the way, I don't like it all, I think the U.S. should defund it, but one of the measures they have in their big database is something called average individual consumption. And the OECD average is 100, so the measures are compared to the, the average of 100. You can see the United States at the top of the chart is at about 145, much richer than any other OECD country, including the little tax haven of Luxembourg, which is number two, uh, then followed by Australia and Norway, which is rich with oil, so that's why they tend to be pretty good, and then Switzerland, which is actually a very free market place, the most free market place uh, in Europe. But look at the average European country. Uh, look at France uh, and Sweden, which are right about 100. In other words, this OECD data, the OECD, by the way, is a left-leaning bureaucracy. They are not trying to put out numbers in favor of free markets. But you know, their data sources are pretty genuine and honest. And they are, in effect, telling us in this chart here that the average person in the United States has living standards 45% higher than the average person in Sweden and France. So there is a cost, according to this data, in being like Europe. Making government bigger and having higher tax burdens on people does translate into lower living standards. 